heard about the great Alabama teams in the early and mid 60s, but after having two real poor seasons, we didn't feel a part of this team because uh, we'd never accomplished anything. And I believe this team just had a goal to accomplish something big, to be a part of a, a national championship team. Uh, we wanted to be known as a team that brought Alabama back into national prominence. Well, it's, it's not only uh, it's the greatest thing in the world to us to be number one. Of course, it started long before this Alabama game. It dates way back to the beginning of the season. We were rated number one in both polls, and we maintained that position all season long. And this is going to be our toughest test to date, and we just hope we can maintain that number one position. Number two, Alabama, meets number one, Nebraska, for the National Collegiate Championship. Brought to you by Texaco. Press Texaco to have the right gasoline for you. By Goodyear, more people ride on Goodyear tires than on any other time. And by Pontiac and Pontiac dealers, who also bring you a lineup of 72 Pontiacs that's a cut above. What a Rose Bowl championship you have just seen. Stanford upsetting Michigan in the last seconds, 13 to 12 with a field goal. I hope you've settled down now. This crowd of about 80,000 here in the Orange Bowl for the National Collegiate Championship. Hello, everyone from the Orange Bowl. I'm Jim Simpson along with Kyle Rowe. One year ago tonight, Nebraska needed to defeat LSU to win the national championship. It did that. It has been the national champion since then. Tonight, it puts that number one title on the line against Alabama. You just heard Johnny Musso said the six and five records of other years did not impress the crypt. And they will be the national champions. But right now, Kyle wrote, to be honest, the odds makers say that Nebraska, and rightfully so, being number one, favored by about a touchdown. Well, obviously, there's a difference of opinion. The Nebraska people, they think they are number one. They are rated as such in the polls, and they feel that their record uh, warrants that rating. The Follows of Alabama, however, have a different opinion. They don't think that the Nebraska team has faced the tough schedule that the Alabama team has, the consistent tough opponents, and they also feel that the Nebraska team has not faced a defensive unit as tough as the Alabama defensive unit that they'll face tonight. Obviously, a difference of opinion. We'll find out tonight. Well, at stake is the National Football Foundation's MacArthur Bowl, which will be awarded after the game tonight to that team that wins, to that team that honestly wins the national championship tonight here in the Orange Bowl. It has been raining, and down on the field in some of that rain, our colleague Bill Ennis and Bill Howes it down there. Jim, it is wet. About two and a half inches of hard rain fell in the last hour and a half right here on the floor of the Orange Bowl. As you know, it is artificial surface. Most of that water will drain off, but some will not. There will be water on the field. However, the traction should be pretty good. The weather forecast is 70 degrees right now, about 10 miles per hour, and chance of more showers throughout the evening. Now, these two ball clubs are sky high. The fans around the nation are ready for this one. Alabama and Nebraska are two. You can count on that. Now back up to Jim and Kyle. All right, Bill, we'll be talking to you in a moment. But now, Kyle, when you get down to number one Nebraska and number two Alabama, obviously there are a lot of great stars that have gotten them to this high ranking. First of all, for Alabama. Now, let's take a look at some of their defensive players. We'll be looking at an interception coming up. It will be made by number 42, Alabama's weak side linebacker, Tom Surlis. Surlis, one of the true surprises this season for Alabama. He's the team's top tackler. He has a knack for being in the right spot most of the time, all-conference and All-America honors. Another All-American on that Alabama defensive unit, defensive end Robin Parkhouse, number 90. He's 6'3", 204 pounds, led the team in tackling the opposition for lost yardage. A hard tackler, excellent pass rusher. And anchoring the Alabama offensive unit, huge John Hanna, just a junior, 6'3", 273 pounds, considered by many as perhaps the finest offensive lineman in Alabama history. Hanna is big, but he's versatile. He's a southern wrestling champion, set the school shot put and discus records. You'll see him at guard and possibly at tackle also. And here's the young man all of Alabama is talking about, and the young man all of Nebraska is concerned about, are Alabama's great running back, number 22, Johnny Musso. Musso winding up his collegiate football career here in the Orange Bowl tonight. Has been called by Coach Bear Bryant the greatest back I've ever coached. And this is the man Nebraska will have to stop tonight to retain its national championship. All right, that is number two, Alabama, undefeated in 11 games. Nebraska, of course, has gone 31 games without a loss. One tie, 22 straight victories. They're the national champions. And when you're the national champions, again, Kyle wrote, 
you have got some great football players. You really do. Nebraska's defensive line is loaded with All-American talent. This is number 81, defensive right end Willie Harper, a quick, tough charger, 6'3", 207 pounds. The most third middle guard in the nation is number 79, Rich Glover, 6'1", 234 pounds, possesses great quickness, big, strong, very tough defensive man. And then we have number 75, Larry Jacobson, defensive left tackle and winner of this year's Outland Trophy is the outstanding guard or tackle in the nation. And this is the Huskers' outstanding quarterback, Jerry Taggy, who makes the Nebraska offensive go. He can throw, hitting on almost 60% of his passes. Catching this one is halfback Jeff Kinney, who will be a constant threat to Alabama tonight, either catching passes or on the ground. Now look at the young man that Alabama fears the most, or should, number 20, Nebraska's Johnny Rogers, and no matter how he gets his hands on the ball, he can break your back. In this season that we're concluding, Johnny Rogers led the Big 8 Conference in pass receiving, and as you might well guess, in kickoff and punt returns as well. All right, Kyle, they are some of the players that you'll be looking for, and Johnny Rogers, of course, is a good one. But now, what about the coaches? We got them to talk about each other. First, Bob Devaney talks about Alabama's Paul Bear Bryant. It's real nice to be here, and it's a privilege to play a team coached by Coach Bryant. And uh, we did watch films of this Alabama team. They're a great football team, and we're very proud and happy to have an opportunity to play down here for that national championship another time. Now another highlight of this great game, and that is the Orange Bowl pregame pageantry. Ladies and gentlemen, the Orange Bowl Committee proudly presents its 1972 pregame show entitled First Decade. and the voice of America's first decade in space. Since my beginning, I have stood tall that my country may ever lead the world in quest of new scientific knowledge for the betterment of mankind. I am those dedicated people, the astronauts, their families, the scientists, engineers, laborers, technicians, and the administrators who have made my ventures possible. I am the orbital flight of John Glenn, Ed White walked in space, the tumbling rendezvous of Armstrong and Scott. I am the humming of Pete Conrad, the golf swing of Alan Shepard as they walk the moon's surface. I am Armstrong's giant step for mankind. I am the human compassion that crowds our every venture, the tension that launch time and the anxiety of each recovery. I am the exhilaration of our people at the conclusion of each successful mission. I am their sadness for those who have been lost along the way. And as I am set aside to make way for a new decade, I leave as my legacy to you who come behind me the challenge to move ever forward as I have and to so inspire, present my crew of Apollo 15, the Voyagers to Hadley Will. Colonel, Alfred M. Warden, Jr. Colonel James B. Owen. Colonel David R. Scott.
Johnny Gillespie McGee Jr. once wrote of men who fly. Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter's silvered wings. Sunward I climbed, enjoying the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds, and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. Wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up, up along delirious burning blue, I topped the windswept heights with easy grace where never lark or even eagle flew. And while with silent lifting mind, I plowed the high on the sanctity of space, put out my hand, and touch the face of God. On this great occasion, being ever mindful of our prayer for a peaceful world, we dedicate this night to those Americans who enter their new year as prisoners of war in enemy camps, and in their honor present the National Anthem of the United States of America. We marvel at the pregame pageantry here in the Iron Bowl. And now let us meet some of the outstanding players from the number one team in the nation, the University of Nebraska. As the band leaves the field, here is number 57, John Atkins, a defensive end from Litchburg, Virginia. At quarterback, number 12, Dan Brownson of Shenandoah, Iowa. Number 32, Woody Cox, split end from Gross Point, Michigan. Number 26, he punts and plays slot back, Jeff Hughes of Burlington, Vermont. Number 75, the All-American defensive tackle from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Larry Jacobson. Number 71, an offensive tackle, Kyle Johnson of Phoenix, Arizona. Number 35, another All-American, an eye back, Jeff Kinney from McCook, Nebraska. At safety, from Columbus, Nebraska, Bill Kush, number 24. Number 77, Dick Rupert, offensive guard from Los Angeles, California. This is Bob Terrio, number 45, linebacker from Fullerton, California. Number 65, Keith Workman, offensive guard, Whittier, California. And one of the co-captains from Green Bay, Wisconsin, at right cornerback, number 18, Jim Anderson. And also from Green Bay, Wisconsin, the other co-captain, Jerry Taggy, at quarterback, number 14. And, of course, the head coach of this number one team in the nation, Bob Devaney. And, of course, now there's Alabama and their fine players. Let's meet some of them. Number 65, Buddy Brown, offensive tackle from Tallahassee, Florida. Number 54, offensive tackle, Newark, Delaware. This is Jim Crop. Number 73, the All-American offensive guard from Albertville, Alabama, John Hanna. Number 97, John Mitchell, defensive end from Mobile, Alabama. Number 55, at center from Hartsell, Alabama, Jimmy Grammer. Number 72, Jimmy Rosser, offensive guard, Birmingham, Alabama. Number 77, Jeff Beard, a defensive tackle from Bessemer, Alabama. 
Number 84 is David Bailey, an offensive end from Bailey, Mississippi. Number 28, a defensive back from Tuscaloosa, Steve Williams. Number 42, All-American Tom Silas, linebacker from Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania. Number 49, a defensive halfback from Scottsville, Alabama, Steve Higginbotham. Number 57, Terry Rowell, a defensive tackle from Heidelberg, Mississippi. Number 90, another All-American, Robin Parkhouse, defensive end, Orlando, Florida. And number 22, Johnny Musso, offensive halfback, All-American from Birmingham, Alabama. And of course, the head football coach is Paul Bear Bryant. The National Collegiate Championship is at stake here in the Orange Bowl, and Nebraska and Alabama are ready for the opening kickoff. We'll be right back for the start of the 1972 Orange Bowl game. Backs to you, number 90, Robin Parkhouse, number 22, Johnny Moose of Alabama, Jerry Taggy across the way from Nebraska, number 14, Jim Anderson, number 18, they are co-captains. And that is the referee, Pete Williams, talking with them. In a moment, the flip of the coin. Alabama lists as its co-captain all of the seniors. They are introducing the officials, Pete Williams referee, John Keck is the umpire, Robert Gaston headlines them. Chester Laney is the field judge, Billy T is the back judge, and Tom Miskowski is the clock operator. The flip of the coin. Alabama has won. And Alabama will receive to your right. Tonight's game not only seen around the United States, but in Puerto Rico, Mexico, Caracas, Venezuela, St. Thomas, Canada, Hawaii, Alaska, in Germany, the Canal Zone, the Philippines, and Korea. And we're grateful to the Armed Forces Committee and the citizens of Miami for hosting this spectacular game. It's for the national championship, the MacArthur Bowl, number one ranked, Nebraska, which will kick off to number two, Alabama. And Kyle wrote, Alabama will get its hands on the football first. And this will bring us very quickly to one point that we will have to be watching for, and that is how Nebraska plans to try to stop the wishbone offense. As Shug Jordan of Auburn said, Auburn having lost to Alabama 31-7, he says you really can't stop the wishbone, you can only help to minimize its effect. We'll see how Nebraska attacks it. Rich Sanger is teeing it up. Sophomore, and back are Steve Williams and Bobby McKinney. McKinney, 28, Williams, 26, across the way. Short kick, Williams at the 8, 20, off the 25 to the 26-yard line. Terry Davis will be at quarterback, number 10, Johnny Musso, 22, Steve Michelia, 44, the running backs, Joe LeBou, the slot backer wing back, number 30, 
The ends are Wayne Wheeler, 82, David Bailey, 84. Croft and Brown, the tackle, Russell and Hannah, the guards, and Grammer is at center. Wishbone. And there is Johnny Musso, that time Kyle wrote, in the fullback position of the wishbone. And it's very possible tonight because they know they must generate some type of attack. He is their feature man. They have to get him going if they're going to have any hopes at all of unseating Nebraska as number one. We could see Musso at the left half, the right half, the fullback slot or right behind the quarterback, or possibly even a quarterback before the night's over. Second down, six. Musso again for a couple of yards. John Atkin, 57, Larry Jacobson, 75, Rich Clever, 79, Bill Jansen, 55, Willie Harper, 81, the front five for Nebraska. Linebackers, Jim Brands, 51, Bob Terrio, 45, Joe Blahart, 27, Jim Anderson, 18, the cornerbacks, Bill Cush at safety, 24, and Dave Mason, the monster man, 25. And we come to third down four from Alabama, 32. Davis keeping the ball and running in. To a group of men led by Willie Harper and Jensen. The right defensive end and the right defensive tackle. It's fourth down. And Greg Gant. The Southeastern Conference's best punter with a 41.9 average comes in to kick the ball away to Johnny Rogers. The all big eight punt return man who has returned three punts for touchdown. There's Rogers at the 25. Rogers will feel it at the 27. Going for the sidelines and tripped up across the way. Tripped up by Michelia. Nebraska gets its hands on the ball for the first time at their own 38-yard line. Gary Taggy will be at quarterback 14, Jeff Kinney 35, the eye back, Bill Olds 44, the fullback, Rogers remains in the slot back, number 20. Gary List 85, the tight end, Woody Cox 32, the split end, White and Johnson, the tackle, Bruford and Wharton, the guards, Dumbler at center. Rogers in motion. Taggy hands to Kinney. Big hole, first down across the 50 yard line. Here's a good look at it from behind. Taggy handing off to Kenny, 35, breaking off. Some excellent blocking. Keith Worthman, Carl Johnson on that right side of the line, number 65, 71. First down, Ken Kenny, who scored four touchdowns against Oklahoma, carries the ball, and this time Terry Rowell makes the stop. Alabama now, defensively, Robin Parkhouse, 90, Jerry Rowell, 57, Jeff Beard, 77, Don Mitchell, 97. The front four, Dalzee, 56, Strickland, 36, Silas, 42, the linebackers, Higginbotham, 49, Williams, 28, the cornerbacks, Norris, 40, Wade, 32, the defense. Second and eight. Taggy. Dragged out again by Rowell as he gets to the 45. Rowell, number 57, Kyle, is listed as 5'11", 190. The Alabama coaches told us this week because of the heat in Alabama, he was down to 177 and is playing at left tackle. How about that for a defensive tackle? And that might account for why they have gone at Rowell the last couple of plays. They want to test him. They have some big men blocking on him. Keith Wortman, 238. Dumber, 237. Third down seven, Taggy to the air for the first time. Across the middle, as list is tight end. Down to the 31-yard line. Tackle was made by Chuck Strickland and Steve Higginbotham. First down. Well, Jim, I don't think there's any doubt that we're going to have scoring in this game. You look at the respective offenses. Nebraska at this point in control of the ball, averaging a little better than 38 points per game. No score, 11, 22 to go, just in the first quarter. Spread 
lead formation. They usually pass from there and do. And miss Johnny Rogers, who was covered by Randy Norris, the strong safety, number 40, as well as Higginbotham, number 49. What a valuable little man this Johnny Rogers is. I say little because he's just 5'10", 171. Leading top pass receiver for the Cornhuskers. Also averaging on the ground a little better than seven yards per carry every time he has his hands on the ball. Second down, 10. Rogers the slot just off the left offensive tackle's hip. Jeff Kinney hit by Rao, but got out of his tackle and inside the 30-yard line. Out on the Sugar Bowl today, Oklahoma defeated by Nebraska in a great game, defeated Auburn 40 to 22. The Cotton Bowl, Penn State 30, Texas 6, and the game we hope you saw here on NBC, the Rose Bowl, Stanford upset Michigan in a thriller 13 to 12. There's no score in this one, it's third and seven. One cut by Taggy. Taggy throws for Kitty. Holds on to the football, down to the 21-yard line. Hit by Higginbotham and Jeff Rousey. We might point out that whereas Nebraska uses basically a five-man line against Alabama, Alabama is using a four-man line, basically, in variations of the four. The four-three, the four-four. Their outside ends will stand up. Sometimes it looks like a two-five. Fourth down and about a yard. Nebraska has had the ball for seven plays. Alabama had it for three and had to kick it away. Longwell and Lift, two tight ends are now in. Cox is up. Kitty, and it's going to be close. First down for Nebraska. Another look at Taggy just doing a reverse spin out. Jeff Kenny driving in there. Good strong effort by the Alabama defensive team. Lanny Norris coming up from his safety position. Now we're back to live action. First down from the play. Pitch out this time. But Kenny going outside and being pursued. A knockdown by John Mitchell. The defensive end and boil off on the play. Kinney before that play had carried four times for 21 yards. Looks like Wade, Steve Wade coming up from that safety spot, making that first attempt at the tackle, which slowed the runner down, enabling his teammates to come in to make that tackle. Good quick reaction by this Alabama defensive unit. Also, some good powerful blocking by the Cornhuskers up front. The big offensive line. From the 23, it is second down and 12. He looks like a busted play. And he will be ridden down again by Mitchell. Along with number 36, the sophomore linebacker, Chuck Strickland. Well, I don't think Jerry had any place to go with that ball. Well, he uh, did about all you can do at that point. Just try and pick up as much, regain as much of that yardage as possible. To him at the moment, it looked like that left side was wide open. Rusty Anderson is coming as a split end and comes out wide to the right. This is their spread. They love to pass from this formation. And Taggy takes the draw play and is hit from behind by Parkhouse and throws the ball to Kinney. Gets inside the 20 yard line. Great individual effort by Jerry Taggy after Parkhouse hit him from behind. And I believe they're going to call it back, Jim. They called him down just before he got rid of that ball. A valiant effort on the part of Taggy, but they are bringing it back to the point. Here's a quick replay. Look at Robin Parkhouse on this play as he comes in. He's the one that'll be right on Taggy. And right at this point, as a knee hit the ground, the official right on it, and that was what killed the play. Fourth down and 20, and they are going for it. Taggy. Looping it for Rogers. 
batted away by Lanny Norris. Alabama takes over. And action will continue here at the Iron Bowl with the score, Nebraska nothing and Alabama nothing. Rope. This is Jim Simpson back in the Orange Bowl. Alabama with the ball at the 30, first and 10. Nebraska had the ball for 12 plays, 5 minutes and 15 seconds, and could not score. <laughs> Michelle, the first man through, picks up a couple of yards. But Bob Terrio, who intercepted a pass to stave off LSU in the last quarter of last New Year's night's Iron Bowl game to help win the national championship. In on the tackle along with Jim Branch, who's the strong side linebacker, number 51. Jim, as we saw against the Alabama wishbone, the Nebraska defensive ends will take away the pitch. They will just fly to the outside to prevent the pitch from being successful. Alabama has to make the plays go up the middle. High formation, and that's Johnny Musso. Musso gets two or three yards. Rich Glover, number 79, and Larry Jacobson, 75. The two All-Americans made the stop of another All-American, Johnny Musso. There's a good shot of John Hanna and Larry Jacobson going at each other. Two big All-Americans, 73 Hanna, 75 Jacobson for Nebraska. And on that play, Hanna turning Jacobson outside. Third down and two. Alabama looking for a first down, haven't had one yet. There's the pitch out down the sideline. First down, Johnny Musso. Willie Harper made the stop. And you'll see in the backfield the fake to one side. That will throw the keys off defensively, they hope. And apparently it did. When the man finally came in, John Atkins, the defensive end, to force the quarterback, Musso was open for the pitch out. 81, Willie Harper coming from his other end defensive position to make the tackle. Six minutes to go, first quarter, the national championship at stake. There's no score. Back in the wishbone, that is Pichelia, the fullback, moving inside the 40, down to the 37-yard line. And big, number 57, John Atkins, left defensive end, made the stop. 6'3", 221. He had a great game in last few years by Orange Bowl. Musso has carried four times for 31 yards, nearly eight yards a pop. Second down, seven. Davis again to Michelia, and we have a flag down for the first time. Bob Terrio getting up after the stop. And Nebraska talking with the officials led by referee Pete Williams. There's Jim Anderson, one of three men on the Nebraska squad from Green Bay, Wisconsin. He and quarterback Jerry Taggy are the co-captains. Mark this off, five yards, first penalty, takes it back to the 42. For illegal motion. John Dutton is now coming at defensive right tackle for Nebraska, number 90. Jansen is out. That's Paul Bear Bryant on this side of the field without that famous little pork pie. 
At this point, Jim, Alabama has yet to throw a pass. However, Terry Davis, he doesn't throw often, I would guess you would say. 66 passes, completed 42 of them, though. When he does throw, he's quite accurate. Bubba Sawyer has come in, playing the tight end position, number 27, nearest field. Now moves out. Second down, 12. The Shelly, the fullback, gets inside the 40. John Dutton, who just came in, was in on the tackle. And again, Jim Branch, the strong side linebacker, number 51. Rock continues to run, 4.45 to go in the first quarter. No score. Ball up to Nebraska, 39. It is third down and nine for Alabama. has lost the football and passes on it at the 39-yard line. And Rich Glover can intimidate any center. And a look at a miscue. A little close-up look that I'm sure Terry Davis wish had not occurred. But they alertly getting back on the ball. Ray Gant has come in as Davis comes out. Gant kicks off and also handles the punts. 41.9-yard average. Johnny Roger goes deep and it might be that Gant is not going to allow Rogers to return this ball. He might simply angle this one out of bounds. By pass. Has to run with it, and Nebraska takes over. Looks like Willie Hopper was the first man to hit Gant. And action will continue here at the Iron Ball. The score remaining, Alabama nothing, and Nebraska nothing. Huskers of Nebraska have the ball at their own 42. First down and 10. Cox comes wide right to the bottom of the screen. Rogers in motion. Kenny with the football and picks up about five and goes into Alabama territory. Don Mitchell over there to make the tackle. Give him six on the play. It is second down and four. Mari Dan Kroger, number 46, has come in to replace Bill Olds at fullback. That's Gant talking to one of his coaches. Second man through again, Kenny, and this time, just gets a yard or so. Looked like Chuck Strickland, number 36, the sophomore, made the stop. Chuck is listed in the brochure as being from Chattanooga. But his home folks want you to know he's from East Ridge, Tennessee, a suburb of Chattanooga. You'll notice Nebraska quite often will spend a great deal of time over that ball. Quite often they are simply calling automatics at the line of scrimmage. They'll do that quite frequently. Third down three. Rogers in motion and they're throwing to him and he's got the first down. Down to the 35 yard line. Back made by Ralph C. and Silver. What great timing on this, too, as Rogers comes out, and as he cuts up right behind the block of Jerry List, 85, List putting that block on Steve Higginbotham, number 49, the cornerback would come up to force the play. Tagging. 
Looking deep down the sidelines and over close. Is that in the end zone? It is Woody Cox. Back there with him is Steve Williams. And the flag is down. Interference at the two. First and goal to go, Nebraska. Steve Williams trying to pull away from Cox on that play. Really trying to keep from interfering. He actually, you'll see him trying to pull up right about this point. That's where he jostled him. And Williams, knowing that he did make contact, trying to pull back away from him. Jeff Kinney. Touchdown! the power blocking of that Nebraska offensive line. Dummler at center, Wardman and Rupert the guard, right up the middle, Jeff Kinney. Dagger to hold, Sanger to try to have the extra point, 50 yards, eight yards in four plays, and the kick is no good. But in this battle for the national championship, Nebraska, the number one team, has won first blood. Action will continue here at the Iron Bowl to score. Nebraska six, Alabama nothing. Devaney, head coach of Nebraska, graduate of Alma, Michigan College, and they're very proud of him up there. Nebraska's had the ball seven minutes and three seconds, Alabama five minutes and 58 seconds. Sanger to kick off. Williams and McKinney are deep, and that is Williams with the football. And gets out to the 25-yard line, will be first and ten. Well, for the third time, and this is the 12th game of this season for the Crimson Tide of Alabama, they are behind. A high pass from center. On the punt as we see the penalty stepped off here for a personal foul. And then, of course, the interference called against Williams. Nebraska had it first and goal to go at the two. Kinney, who scored four touchdowns in the Oklahoma game, rammed it in. Out is first down from the 39. And there's the personal foul signal. One of the Nebraska tacklers arriving a little too late on the scene in the official defense. Wheeler to the left, Baylor to the right. That is Gant running out to the bottom of your screen. Davis turning up and you can see Glover on top of him. Lawhawk came up. There's Big Rich Glover, 79, the junior. 6'1", 234, fighting his way through. His assignment to take that quarterback as he comes back in. You see up the top of your screen, 57 Atkins, who turned the pitch man. Rather forced the pitch to not be thrown since he was out there. Russo now splits out. Ellis Beck has joined Knapp in the backfield. Right ahead goes Ellis Beck. Number 35, Bob Terrio, 45, getting up after the tackle. One minute to go in the quarter. It is six to nothing, Nebraska. The ball at the 44-yard line, third down and five. Try to 
occasionally we see the Alabama team doing the little counter step in the backfield, trying to throw the Nebraska defensive tees off. Gary Davis in trouble. Glover Watson and on top of him. Gary got away from Bill Jansen and ran right back in the Glover. Have a look at Davis. First pass he's tried. There's 79 Glover. He's the first one that makes the fourth. And 55 Jansen. And again, in to do the kicking. Remember the last time, it was a bad snap. This one is perfect. Johnny Rogers. What a run. He will go all the way. This is what Alabama was trying not to be forced to do. Johnny Rogers, some great moves in the back, some great blocks up front for him to open up that alley down the right side. Big 8 conference leading punt returner, kickoff returner. Oh, there, Brian had talked to us, Kyle, about kicking away from Johnny Rogers, perhaps kicking it out of bounds if he had any kind of field position at all. The kicking game has cost Alabama. A high pass from center set up the first touchdown, and the 78-yard punt return as the ball was kicked to Rogers right down the middle has caused the second, plus some individual brilliance on the behalf of Johnny Rogers. Nebraska leads 12 to nothing. Time is out in the first quarter. And let's watch Johnny Rogers again. This from this ground level camera, you'll see some great moves back there as he moves in and out, faking out these defensive men who are coming down under the kick. And then he starts picking up some key blocks downfield. Right at the top of your screen, another one. Johnny Rogers with excellent speed, leading pass receiver, leading kick returner, great runner. Well, he returned one for a touchdown against Oklahoma. He had returned three during 1971, and he starts out 1972 by returning a fourth. Having missed the first extra point, they will go for two. Aggie looking into the end zone and has his man, Murray Don Kroger. And at the end of the first quarter, Nebraska leads Alabama by the score of 14 to nothing. Kenny 26. This 
is Williams again, and there goes the football. Nebraska recovers. It looked like either Jim Carson or Peterson. The ball is at the 27-yard line. A high pass from center. A punt return, and now a fumble on a kickoff, and Alabama is again in trouble. Johnny Rogers trying to get outside and is knocked out and maybe pulled off. to nothing. Alabama in the first quarter gained 34 yards only. Attempted one pass. But it has been, as we said, the kicking game that has Nebraska in front. Taggy. Kinney can't hold on to it. Change that. That is List, the tight end. Number 85, not 35. And it'll be third down and 12. Alabama trying to muster its defensive forces so that they can get back in this ball game. Frosty Anderson has come in for Nebraska. Daggy is four for seven for 36 yards. across the middle and all by himself. First down. Heading up is number 22, Gary Dixon, just in the lineup. Another look at it. Shaggy going back. Dixon was at the slot position, just curled right over the middle. Big pitch, Dixon again. Dixon down to the five, and inside the five, down to the three. Gary Dixon, a junior from Oxnard, California. Alabama's defense has averaged 7.6 points per ball game given up. Thus far, they've given up 14, and Nebraska is knocking at the door again. Dixon gets the call, and look at that play by Robin Parkhouse. All Southeastern Conference, second team All-American from Orlando, Florida. And here from a different level, Parkhouse coming out. And up to make the tackle on Dixon. Parkhouse, 6'3", 201, a senior, All-American ranking. Ben Gerson has come in, number 39 for Nebraska. Taggy looking as his man. Touchdown. Dan Kroger. Taggy with some good faking in the backfield and good blocking right there by Gary Dixon, 22, who had been making those runs. As you saw his foot go out of bounds, right on the one. Well, I was watching a Nebraska man call it a touchdown down. He stepped out of about the one, as you can see in the replay. Fourth down and about a yard. Daggy carries, and this time it is a touchdown. Taggy coming straight at you this time. Right behind the center, Doug Gumler, his right guard, Keith Wharton, Dick Rupert, the left guard, all piling underneath there, trying to drive them up. Rich Sanger, 60 for 64 during the regular season, has another tonight. 
And action will continue here at the Iron Bowl with the score now. Early in the second quarter, Nebraska 21, Alabama nothing. Jim Simpson with Kyle Rhodes. Sanger will kick off again to McKinney and Williams. McKinney this time. Out to the 30-yard line. He is their best kickoff man. Well, tomorrow afternoon, NBC will be right back here in this Iron Bowl. Professional football game, the American Football Conference Championship game. Baltimore down here against the beloved Dolphins of Miami at 4.30 Eastern time. Live and cutter here on NBC. Now from the 30, Alabama down 21 to nothing. 12 and a half minutes to go in the half. Davis in trouble. And Willie Hopper drags him down for a five-yard loss. Hopper was the outstanding lineman last year in this Iron Bowl game, and Nebraska won its national championship. You know, Jim, I just have to believe that in preparation for this big game, both clubs made some minor adjustments, some very uh, minor adjustments, I guess you might call it, to their regular attack. They put in counter plays to try and counter against defensive keys. It must be confusing. They must have blown a couple of plays already for that very reason. Fullback has the football, Michelia, and Terrio is in on the stop along with Jim Branch. Alabama, before that play, had a net of 29 yards. Nebraska has 90. And Nebraska has 24 plays. Alabama, 16. Jim Simmons has checked in as a tight end for the Crimson Tide, number 85. On the sidelines there, Paul Bear Bryant and David Bailey, number 84, who just came out. Davis trying to get something going to LeBou and overshoots him at the 28-yard line. And it will be fourth down and 12, and Alabama's Greg Gant comes in to do the kicking again as Davis comes out. And Johnny Rogers walks back. 78 yards, the punt return last time. Very short kick off the side of his foot. It's an Alabama bounce, though, and now rolls inside the 35-yard line and is down on the 32-yard line. Well, Nebraska will take over. First and ten, and action will continue here at the Orange Bowl. The score in the second quarter, Nebraska 21, Alabama nothing.
Nebraska six first downs, Alabama two, Cornhuskers ball, first and ten on their own, 32. Long count, second man through, Kitty gets out near the 40-yard line. On Kyle, and looking down what Alabama has done over the year, they've won 11, lost none during 1971. Houston was the top team to score against them 20 points. Nebraska already has 21. When you look at that offensive line, supplemented with the blocking of their backs, Bill Olds on that last play, in to make a key block on a linebacker, firing in there. And he gets the call again, and again a big hole. Mitchell's on top of him, number 97. And he's got another first down. That's number seven for Nebraska. Jim Patterson, number 96, has moved in as right defensive tackle for Alabama, replacing Jim Beer, or rather, Jeff Beer. And he's carried the ball nine times for 34 yards. Nagy. Going wrong, there's Hazel. And from this level, there's Rogers circling out of that backfield, curling right across the middle, wide open, a great catch, and as he tried to put it away, the tackle hit by Steve Williams, knocking that ball loose. Here comes Steve Wade, the Alabama junior picking it up, Robinson trying to pick him up while we're running this replay there. The player down on the field. A penalty has been assessed against Alabama. The ball is now back to the one yard line. Looks like Steve Williams is down. And of course, after the recovery by Wade, obviously there was a clipping penalty, has taken the ball back to the one yard line. Action will continue here at the Orange Bowl. The score in Nebraska 21, Alabama nothing. Uh, in collegiate rules, you cannot pick up a fumble once it hits the ground and run it. So where he's hit it, picked it up, is where it goes. True. Ah, uh, yes. there as Williams walks off the field. The fumble hit the ground, of course, and so when Wade picked it up, in collegiate rules, it was Jeff there. Had it gone one more yard, he picked it up in the end zone, it would have come out to the 20. First man through, number 44, Steve Vichelia. Getting up is Glover. Jacobson also right there. Now let's go quickly to Bill Ellis. Bill Ennis, are you there? A little trouble with Bill's microphone. He's checking for us on Williams. Celia <laughs> again. Football loose to Busca. Bob Celio. Again, a look at it. Alabama trying to make that inside running game go. The handoff to Bichelia. The ball bounces loose. Bob Terrio, a Nebraska senior, picks it up. Nebraska's ball on the four-yard line of Alabama. That is the second fumble lost. And Kyle, when you add to it, 
a high pass from center on a punt and the 70 yard, 78 yard punt return of Johnny Rogers. Nebraska has really forced Alabama into many mistakes and the Corn Huskers are rolling. There is Dixon down to the two yard line. There's still 39 minutes and five seconds of playing time left. Well, you talk about a balanced team. We've seen the Nebraska defensive unit in action. We're watching their offensive unit in action. And we've seen the effect of their kicking and kick return team. Just outstanding. Touchdown of is Gary Dixon. Gary Dixon coming in right behind his running back holes, right through the hole, 63, trying to hold on to him, Marvin Byrne. And again, 44 Bill Olds leading him through there with a good block on number 36, Chuck Strickland, the linebacker for Alabama. Rich Sanger, Jaggy to hold for the extra point, and it's perfect. Nebraska's out in front in this battle for the National Collegiate Championship by 28 to nothing. Now come to Sapporo, Japan with NBC on television in February for the 11th Winter Olympic Games. Olympics gold medal winner Chad McDermott will be with us in Sapporo for NBC and so will skier Billy Kidd and ski jumper Art Devlin, two other Olympic veterans, and pretty Peggy Fleming who brought home America's only gold medal in 1968. Make it a television date. NBC's exclusive Olympics coverage from Zapporo, Japan, February 1st to the 13th. 28 to nothing, Paul Bear Bryant won 210 ball games, but down 28 to nothing here as Sanger kicks off. Short kick. Turning it on and getting out of bounds is. Robin Gary, a defensive back in there as Williams was out after the injury. And Dan Kroger made the stop, number 46. And the flag is down for what reason? Uh, we just can only assume it's perhaps a clipping penalty. They usually occur on such plays. Flag is down at the 36-yard line. Holding, perhaps. There looks like a holding signal. Holding is what is charged against Alabama. I'm talking things over with safety man Bill Push. And they're marching off the yardage. Back inside the 20 to the 19. Now the Crimson Tide. Alabama's had the ball for 20 plays, Nebraska for 29. Gary Davis hands the ball off to Ellis Beck. Beck gets across the 20-yard line. To the 23. Jim Branch made the stop, number 51. Gain of four to second down and six. 8.15 to go in the second quarter. That's one of the few times thus far that Alabama has picked up substantial yardage up the middle. The story thus far, Jansen, Glover, Jacobson, the middle of that Nebraska line. Nap in motion out to the right. Donnie Musso coming this way, and there's Glover. And Glover gave him a little pat after he had him down. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. And another look at Rich Glover, the junior, fighting off the blocks. Quick lateral reaction. Strong. Wheels down, Musso. The Washington, D.C. Touchdown Club nominated Rich Glover, Defensive Lineman of the Year. Third down, seven. Davis has the ball, and guess who's got it? Rich Glover again. And 
when you talk about quickness, that's Glover just to the right, quickly fighting off the block. Great pursuit. Reads the play beautifully. And now, again, in again to do the kicking. Ronnie Rogers is back deep. Booms a kick, sending Rogers back. Inside the 30, has it at the 27. And down he goes as he gets out to the 35-yard line. On top of him was number 70, Don Copeland. And action will continue here in the Orange Bowl in Miami with the score. Nebraska 28 and Alabama nothing. Yes, I can tell you, hear you. I'm ready. Okay. Okay, well, what happened? Well, I had to release to go find out what the heck happened. I couldn't find the stage manager either. I could have given you a real quick pop. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, Kyle's got a question. Uh, Don, if you can get that ground level, if you can get that ground level camera shooting some uh, reaction shots of uh, Bear Bryant, super shots, when something goes wrong, I mean. Jim Simpson with Kyle Rod and Bill Ennis. Are you down there for a report on Steve Williams? I'm knocked out of him. He could possibly have a slight bruise rib, but he should see more action. But he's still seeing cobwebs right now. I'll back up to you. All right, first down Nebraska at the 36. This is Olds, the fullback, showing great power. First down moves into Alabama territory at the 46-yard line. Wayne Atkinson just in. Number 21 is the free safety made the stop. A 19-yard catter. Now Chuck Strickland coming back in as a middle linebacker. And out comes Wayne Hall, number 50. Johnny Rogers. That was John Mitchell who turned him in, but it was Robin Parkhouse who made the stop. And there's Paul Bear Bryant. And another look very quickly. Number 90, Robin Parkhouse, coming all the way from the other side to make the tackle. In a four, it is second down and six. Watkins has come in now as a defensive end for Alabama. Kenny. Here's one of those inside reverses. Kenny coming back on the inside. It just opened up beautifully. They let the reaction of his move to the right take the defense to the unit off to that side, countering back underneath. From the 10 yard line. Jackie's still got the football, pitching back Johnny Rogers, and down near the six. McKinney and McMakin, number 18 and on the tackle, and there is Robin Parkhouse again. Nebraska has 11 first downs, Alabama two. And how do you defense an offense like that? You don't know where they're going to attack you from. Kenny on the reverse, Rogers on the reverse, on the pitch out, the option. But he talks, goes wide right. Guinea again, and he's not going to get too much there. Down that is number 18, McMakin, the strong side safety that made the stop. But Kyle, I remember the remarks of Chuck Fairbanks of Oklahoma, the winning coach in today's Sugar Bowl, when after that great game, Against Nebraska said it's the most complete football team he has ever seen. And I'm sure that Paul Bear Bond is trying to figure out what to do now. Third down. And Garson has come in, number 39. 
Kinney. Getting up is Jeff Rousey along with Chuck Strickland. They made the stop. Ball is at the three. And it is fourth down. goes number 85 Jerry List of Nebraska he started off and was offside a legal procedures called and so instead of fourth down and three it will be fourth down and eight three minutes 43 seconds to go in the half that ought to bring the kicking team in and I believe they are here's a quick look at List he started early he pulled Park House off now Sanger, five of nine field goals, three of those against Iowa State with Taggy to hold at the 15. It will be a 25-yard effort. Kick is no good. Off to the side, and Alabama has held at the 20-yard line after the ball goes into the end zone. First down and 10 for the Crimson Tide. At the point that comes, Kyle, what do they do to advance against that Nebraska defense? reminder that some of these men will move on over to Mobile, Alabama right after this game is over to start practice for the North-South Senior Bowl game in Mobile and NBC will be there at 2 o'clock Eastern time next Saturday afternoon. The best of the graduating seniors. But again, my question, Kyle, what does Alabama do? Well, they have apparently not been able to solve their running up the middle. It's been just too much of those three big men up front. Jansen, Glover, Jacobs, and he may have to put the ball in the air a little more than he's accustomed to time. Davis to put the ball in the air. Avid has his man. Out of bounds, number 84, David Bailey. Here's a look at David Bailey. A senior running up pattern, heading to his outside. Running on Dave Mason, 25. Interesting story there, Kyle. As a sophomore, he caught 56 passes. As a junior, 55 passes. This year, called on the block more, only 21. They have not been drawing. Goes down from the 25, and up the middle, goes Ellis Beck. Ranch had him around the ankles, and Rich Glover was there. Again, you could see Harper, the defensive right end, going out with the pitch out man making sure that they weren't able to get the wide play going, requiring him to either have to hand off, cut the ball back up inside himself. Less than three minutes now in this 28-0 ball game, second down and seven. Gant goes out wide to the top of his screen. This is Johnny Musso breaking it. He was tripped up by Hopper. But it's a first down for Alabama. The ball moved out to the 47-yard line. Musso, again, a little counter play, just a little wrinkle they put into their offensive attack, trying to take advantage of a normal Nebraska defensive reaction. Davis still with the ball. Has time. Throws. Cut it for Sawyer. No good. Back there with him was number 18, Jim Anderson. They say about Anderson, he's only made two mistakes. Mel Grave beat him on a fly pattern in 69 while playing with Missouri, and last year, Coffey of LSU caught a touchdown pass on him. Other than that, this is his wind-up as a senior at Nebraska. Nobody else has beaten co-captain Jim Anderson. Second down and 10. Donovan Musso has carried the ball seven times, 22 yards. Musso with the ball again, and picked up again by Bob Terrio as he gets to the 50-yard line. It'll be third down, and about seven with two minutes to go. There's that awesome Nebraska defense. And again, a little different rhythm for the Alabama offensive unit. Looking at Davis's statistics, 66 passes in an 11-game season. Not too many. He's thrown three thus far. Completed one. 
Joe LeBou has come in, number 30. And now Terry Davis says he would like a timeout. And Davis will walk over and talk things over with Paul Bearbine. Alabama undefeated through 11 games of 1971. Nebraska working on a 31-game streak. Without a loss, one tie, 22 without a loss or a tie. Paul Bear Bryant and let us see what Bill Ennis has to say, Bill. Again, you know, Jim, I think the Jim, I think the problem here on the sideline, they're probably putting in all sorts of little adjustments here. And the communications problem is a big one, particularly when you're trailing 28 to nothing. Everyone has a suggestion for you, including us up here <laughs> in the booth. <laughs> and uh, fortunately, he, won't, he can't hear ours. But he's, uh, he's having a communications problem. I'm sure everyone's shouting suggestions and instructions to him, complicated or a little different formations. Well, if you've just come home and wondered why is it 28 to nothing, Bob Devaney across the way, high pass from center on a punt, led to the first touchdown. Johnny Rogers returned the punt, 78 yards for a touchdown. There was a fumble and a kickoff to set up a touchdown. And then another fumble set up a touchdown. Davis with the football. Davis aiming for Bailey. And right there with him was Joe Blahat, number 27. And right with Davis was Willie Harper. Harper, as we said, was the defensive lineman of last year's Orange Bowl game. And against Oklahoma, it was his job, and Kyle's been talking about it, just watch the pitch man, and he made one tackle and one assist. Because his job was simply to watch Greg Pruitt. Rodgers goes deep again on fourth down and seven with a minute and a half to go, and that's Gant who will handle a punting. He's trying for the out of bounds, but it didn't. At the 15, Rogers. All kinds of moves, and across the 25 and out to the 28 yard line. But the tackle was made there by Jim Cook, number 54. The has got the football again. From the 28. Jerry Taggy, and there goes Steve Williams. He was shaken up on a fumble play. There's the draw play, uh, not going anywhere, is Mari Damsilver, number 46. Terry Rowell, number 57. And Marvin Barron, who's now on his right defensive tackle, number 63, made the stop. You pointed out earlier Rowell's size, 5'11". He's listed as 190 pounds. We have been told by people, I guess, that should know, <laughs> people who work with him, that uh, he is probably closer to 180, doing a tremendous job at defensive tackle. Jim Patterson has now come in. Flags go down as Dixon carries the ball out to the 30-yard line. Tom Surlis holding on to the ankles, but the penalty is coming up against the Cornhuskers of Nebraska, and that's Robin Parkhouse talking with the referee, Pete Williams. And there's Terry Rowell. Legal motion by Nebraska, refused by Alabama. Third down and 10. And now Barron is coming back in. Jeff Beard has gone to the dressing room also along with Williams on the injury. Thus we've had Patterson and Barron in there. Let's reverse, Let's reverse. Aggie hands off. Looks like a loose ball for a moment, and it is picked up by Nebraska. Terry Dixon was the runner. Got the ball out to the 35-yard line, and now Alabama calls timeout. With 24 seconds left and fourth down, they'd like to get the ball one more time. All right, Bill Ennis, are you there? Hello, yes, we are down here. We had uh, one injury to Steve Williams. Of course, he is back in the ball game. A wide receiver a moment ago, Wayne Wheeler, number 82, was shaken up, had a shoulder bruise, but he seems to be all right. Down here on the Alabama side of the bench uh, on the field, uh, Jim and Kyle, uh, certainly a few moments of just stunned, players stunned over this uh, tremendous 28 to nothing lead. But 
Of course, when they held Nebraska a moment ago and uh, got the football back, uh, you saw some smiles come back on the faces of the Alabama players. So they're not out of it yet. There's a lot of spirit still down here, and that's the way it looks from here. Let's go back upstairs to you. All right, Bill, as you were talking, you were looking at the face of Paul Bear Bryant, talking with his players as Jeff Hughes has come in for the first time today to do the punting. Now, NBC will be back here tomorrow. Baltimore against Miami, American Conference Championship at 4.30. Now, here's Hughes. He gets a high pass from center. And Bobby McKinney goes deep inside his 20. Back to the 16. And gets out to the 30-yard line. He was upended by Gary Dixon, number 22. And now, with 14 seconds left in the half, a 48-yard punt by Hughes has been averaging 36 yards. Well, Kyle, we came in looking for a close, rough, tough ball game decided in the closing moments. And may, maybe it yet will be. But this first half all belongs to Nebraska. Alabama has made mistakes. Nebraska has been strong offensively and defensively and leads 28 nothing. There's the pass from Davis to Wheeler. The flip back to Musso. And he is run out of bounds at the 48-yard line. There's your little bit of razzle-dazzle. Jim Anderson ran him out. Six seconds to go in the half. That was a pass from Davis to Wheeler who flipped the Musso. Ball is on the 47-yard line. And perhaps time for one more play. Bubba Sawyer is in and comes out wide right. Bailey to the left. Wheeler's in. They've got him three wide receivers. Davis, looking, fires, has Wheeler, they throw it again to Musso, this side, and this time he's inside the 40, and no more time, shows on the clock. That's the end of the first half of the 1972 Orange Bowl game with the score, Nebraska 28, Alabama 7.
that when Prince Charming sees Sleeping Beauty, there was always the ensuing twist to bring a happy ending. But in our story, the prince throws the kiss. And lo, our Sleeping Beauty not only awakens, she becomes Madame Butterfly. Our magical story of classical music comes to an end with everyone happy ever after. And we conclude, as we say, goodbye to 1971 by wishing you and yours happiness ever after, especially in 1972. Good night and God bless you all. Thank you, Anita Bryant. Thank you, Ernie Salad and the Orange Bowl Committee for another wonderful halftime. The score is Nebraska 28, Alabama nothing, as we get ready for the second half kickoff of the 1972 Orange Bowl game. Hello again from the Orange Bowl. Jim Simpson with Kyle Rowe, 28 to nothing. A lot of breaks, but uh, Kyle, better than six yards per try for Nebraska, less than two yards per try for Alabama. Well, offensively, Nebraska is really just blowing them off the field. Uh, they are overpowering them in the line offensively. Defensively, Alabama has yet to solve the problem of going up the middle. They, they are shutting off the outside. They're not giving them the outside at all. And thus far, they've held them completely uh, well, in check in the middle. Alabama has to figure out how to run up the middle or get their passing game going, which we saw uh, Terry going to right toward the end of the first half. So I expect to see him put the ball in the air again here in the second half if he's still having trouble running up the middle. And the four touchdowns, of course, have been on a high pass from center. A 77-yard kickoff return by Johnny Rogers. A fumble on a kickoff. And a fumble on a running. Nothing. Bob Devaney and his Nebraska squad across the way. They won the national championship in this very game one year ago tonight, defeating LSU in a fourth quarter comeback 17 to 12. Since that time, they've gone on to win 12 other games. And here are those first half statistics, Kyle. And interestingly enough, a uh, statistic that I don't believe appears there are the number of times each team has handled the ball. Alabama has handled the ball 53 plays, Nebraska only 36. However, Nebraska's rolled up a total of 225 yards, total offense against 96 for Alabama, and that's pretty much the story as we get the second half kickoff underway. Gantt sends Rodgers into the end zone and out of the end zone, and Nebraska will take over first and 10 on their own 20. Now to repeat again, there's a high pass from center on a Gantt attempted punt early in the first quarter. He was tackled. They moved on in with the aid of an interference play. Kinney scoring the first touchdown. They kicked the ball away to Rodgers. He scored at 77 yards for a score. Then they kicked off Nebraska to Alabama. They fumbled on the kickoff. They took it in. And then there was a fumble on the running play. And Dixon took it in. And it's 28-0. Now from the 20-yard line. Big pitch, Jeff Kinney. Kinney gets out to the 23. Tackled across the way by Surlis. And number 28, it looks like. No, that's 26. I was looking to see if it's 28 because that is Steve Williams who left the 
Stadium injured, and it is McKinney, 26, playing as his replacement. Second down and seven. Kinney again, he had 76 yards before that play and picks up about three more out to the 26-yard line. And it's third down and four. Kenny has scored one of the touchdowns. Incredible the number of touchdowns the Nebraska offense has scored. 51 before tonight and 64 before tonight altogether. Third down, Taggy. In trouble, fires, and it is incomplete. Intended there for Jeff Kinney. And Robin Parkhouse was all over Jerry Taggy. And All-American Robin Parkhouse moving in. He'll be working on Olds, driving Olds right back. Continues to come. And now Jeff Hughes will kick the ball away. McKinney goes deep. Alabama will get a chance as McKinney is there standing back on his 36-yard line. They'll put the ball in play and try to get on the scoreboard. And handling by Hughes, but he gets the ball away, and McKinney has to call for the fair catch and has it at the 43-yard line. Well, it is first and 10 for Alabama. A 30-yard punt after Hughes bobbled the snap from center. And now down in the corner of the end zone, the Alabama crowd is up and asking the Crimson Tide to do something. They average less than two yards per carry in the first half. Davis flips back LeBou down to the 46-yard line and may have a first down. Willie Hopper, 81, made the stop. And that was really close, that pitch out. He waited till the very last minute. In fact, for a moment, it looked like he had waited just a little too long. Got it off in time. Very quickly, another look at it as Harry Davis brings the ball toward you. And there was the floating in Willie Harper, number 81, finally came in on the pitch out. Back to live action. First down, that is Johnny Musso, and Musso gets down to the 39 yard line. That's Jacobson holding on to his heels, the All-American. Now we have some interesting matchups. Hannah in the line for Alabama, an All-American, going against Jacobson and Glover, both All-Americans. Musso there, number 22, an All-American. Carrying the football. Harper goes out. Manstead in a right defensive end. Quarterback draw, Davis. Inside the 30, down to the 26-yard line. With Anderson making the stop. Another look at it. A little fake pitch back and then trying to come back on a, really a bootleg counter for a quarterback. Eluding number 45, Bob Perry, the linebacker. Davis, of course, can run when they shut out the outside pitch out before against Miami. Also against Colbert. He scored a couple of touchdowns carrying himself. Davis again going to throw, down and out for Bailey across the way over his head at the 15-yard line. Joe Blahart back to defend. It's second down 10, 12-27 to go, third quarter. Nebraska leads it by four touchdowns, and Alabama trying to get on the ball. Down to Musso, Musso carried eight times in the first half at 46 yards. Musso carries on the average of 19 or 20 times per ball game, so it is not unusual for him to have carried only eight times in the first half. Lagoo, top of your screen. Davis keeps the ball inside the 20-yard line. Not enough for the first down, but close to it. That's Glover getting up. Here comes Davis again. Once again, number 81, Willie Hoffer, the All-American defensive right end, going to the right in your screen. He's going to take care of the pitch man. Davis has to pull it back up inside. Third down and two yards. J. 
Johnny Musso trying to get the two yards and is very close. That's John Dutton, number 90, who made the tackle. First down, Alabama. Musso has now picked up 55 yards and 10 tries. The ball at the Nebraska 16. And I'm sure you know that this is by far and away the best offensive group of plays Alabama's put together and the deepest they've gone into Nebraska territory. Quarterback draw again, and Davis is going to get a yard or two. That's all. That's number 57, John Atkins, left defensive end and made the stop. Get Davis two yards. It's second down eight. They're trying to pick up any changes Alabama may have made at halftime. However slight they might have been, we do see Hanna now playing out of the tackle position. That will put him directly opposite Larry Jacobson, the All-America tackle for Nebraska. Davis looking to throw to Bailey. It is intercepted in the end zone. Intended for Bailey and intercepted. Bailey was behind him, the pass was slightly underthrown, and Blahawk went up and got it. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. Action will continue here at the Iron Bowl to score still. Alaska 28, Alabama nothing. Devaney, head coach of Nebraska, Carl Sommer, in charge of the offensive line on the phones to his right. Nebraska got the ball, first and 10 on their own 20. Dan Kroger is the up man in the eye, the fullback. That's Rogers in motion. Tagging, looking to throw, and unable to hold on to it is Kinney. Serlis, Parkhouse, and Rowell over there for Alabama. Crimson Tide, despite Blahawk's interception, Kyle, seemed to be a little bit more charged up along the sideline. Well, it's, uh, for their sake, it was a shame that he didn't hit him because he was wide open. Davis underthrowing his pass, and as we pointed out earlier, usually quite accurate, carrying an extremely high percent of completion, 63. The Baskins only got one more first down than Alabama. Dan Kroger. To the 27. That is Sirlis on top of him. And down below is Jeff Rousey. Another third down play. Third down and three. Well, this is a game that well, everybody thought would be close. And it may yet be, as we said. But they thought that Brakes would decide it. And thus far... Nebraska has forced Alabama into numerous breaks. Jerry Taggy goes to the sidelines. And apparently Nebraska has called timeout and on this fourth down, or rather third down play, and three to go, Taggy wants to talk it over. Called Selmer. Talking upstairs, Bob Devaney talking to him. And our reminder that NBC comes right back here. We have a short turnaround. We'll be back at four. 30 tomorrow afternoon for Baltimore and Miami. And of course, remember later on in this month of January, the American Football Conference, National Football Conference Pro Bowl game. That'll be on Sunday, the 23rd of January at 4 o'clock Eastern time. Here's Taggy. 
This team has not lost in the last 31 games, trying to hold on to that national championship they won here a year ago. Alabama coming off a couple of six and five seasons. As Johnny Muto said at the outset of our show, he wants to be a part of the team that brings national prominence and championship back to Tuscaloosa. Right now it is a long row. Third down and three. Rodgers in motion. The throw to Rodgers, and Rodgers does not get to the 30-yard line. It'll be fourth down, and Nebraska for the second series of downs in this half has been held and will have to punt the ball away. Service made the stop. And Alabama, which moved the ball very well, Kyle, will get its hands on the football one more time. Well, actually, Alabama hasn't made uh, any uh, discernible changes in their defensive alignment. They're just playing a little better than they did that first half, as well as they know how. Used to kick to Bobby McKinney. High pass from center. And another good kick. McKinney chasing it down at the 30. Has it at the 29. Good speed. And bumped out of bounds across the way by Jeff Kinney. Gets the ball out to the 45-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Crimson Tide. And action will continue here at the Iron Bowl. With four remaining as it did at halftime. Nebraska 28. Alabama nothing. I got a little station ID, but I'll say something before. I think he's all right. Get a little cold water there. briefly for a station identification. This is the NBC television network. Robin Parkhouse along the sidelines apparently has hurt his leg. That would be quite a blow to Alabama. He's had a super night. First and 10 from the 45. First man through, number 44, Steve Bichelier. There's it from the 45 out near the 49. Bob Terrio, who has made a bundle of tackles tonight from his weak side linebacker spot. As a matter of fact, he led the Cornhuskers all year long with 96 total tackles. You know, Jim, we mentioned the Alabama defensive unit made no discernible changes as we watch a penalty being marked off. Backfield in motion, illegal motion. The offensive unit, uh, a good team won't make any major changes at halftime. They'll be so slight, uh, you really couldn't notice them unless you studied films. They'll just vary, maybe hitting a hole a foot or two wider, maybe vary a little bit of blocking, but nothing very major. Too many backs were in motion last time, causing the five yards. And here's a quarterback counter draw again by Davis. He's across the 50, across the 40, first down, and thrown out of bounds inside the 35-yard line by Jim Anderson. Bob Terrio also in on the tackle. 24-yard run, and Alabama has shown some offense here in the third quarter. The ball is at the 32. And this is a play that worked successfully before, and very alertly, good reaction, going to the outside when he saw Terrio moving in. That's Terrio chasing him. Good block downfield by Bubba Sawyer, number 27. Now back to live action. Johnny Musso looking for running room and picks up a cup, couple, uh, tough couple of yards inside the 30-yard line. Musso always seems to get a yard or two, even when it looks like he's going to get none. This fellow's an academic All-American as well as an All-American. There's Robin Parkhouse putting his shoe back on. 8.40 to go, third quarter, Nebraska 28, Alabama nothing. It is second down and seven at the Nebraska 29 for Alabama. Any right, so your left. The break to the shadow, the pitch back, 
Musco gets inside the 25-yard line. Tackle made by Jim Branch. Hold it. That's by T uh, John Atkins, number 57. And as wide as those defensive ends are going to the outside to prevent that pitch out, they ran the pitch out inside of Atkins that time. He finally caught up with Musco. Third down at the 29 and two yards to go. Davis still has a football. He's got the first down. Thrown down at the 10-yard line. By Cook. From the sideline viewpoint, another look at it. Again, Willie Harper going way to the outside. The pitch out is not there. He's standing out there with the pitch man. Davis cutting it up. Here comes Bill Fish, number 24. 78,151 looking on as Alabama's put together another drive here in the third quarter. Davis hands to Michelia, who picks up some tough yardage inside. Harper getting up. Dutton had him around the ankles, number 90. And there's Pat Morrell, number 40. Davis is certainly not adverse to repeating plays. We might see that play in which he had his man wide open behind, I believe it's Blahock who was covering on the play. All-American Larry Jacobson along the line and apparently in some kind of trouble. Davis still with the football. Gets away from one man and gets inside the five-yard line. Knocked down, it looked like, by Cush again, number 24. And Terry Davis slipped the tackle there to get inside the five. Bonnie Johnson at him. Mark, very important. 6.50 to go. Paul Bear Bryant hoping for the miracle that the Crimson Tide can and will come back. Third down from the three. No throw. And not much there. Glover in the middle, number 79. Along with Atkins, another great lateral reaction, taking that block by Buddy Brown, sliding off, getting into the runner. And now, as the Nebraska defense deploys, it is fourth down and goal to go from the three for Alabama. Davis. There is a football. Touchdown. And I'm sure Davis, knowing that the outside is completely shut off, they're not going to let him throw the pitch. He knows he's going to have to go inside. Getting a good block from Musso, too. As Harper came back in to meet the quarterback. And I'm sure, Kyle, that Alabama's thinking, oh, if Laha cannot intercept that other pass. Alabama's ruled twice, but now has scored once. They are going for two. Davis, pitch back. Trying to get into the end zone, and cannot. Is Joe LeBou. Dave Mason, the monster man, drove him back. And so action will continue here at the Orange Bowl with the score, Nebraska 28 and Alabama 6.
car rope. This is Jim Simpson back in the orange bowl. Yant to kick off. You wonder whether he's going to kick it deep. He's got about 20 minutes and 49 seconds worth to go. He kicks it deep. Driving Rogers deep. He falls down, but the ball goes out of the end zone. That, of course, is a free ball. Nebraska could have been in trouble, but the ball goes out of the end zone and will come out for the 20. First down and 10. Now for Alabama's six. They must continue to play defense as they have early here in the second half. Stopping Nebraska twice and forcing two kicks. Nebraska, of course, wants to do just the opposite. Get together the kind of drive, the kind of offense that they had in the first half. This is Rogers, and he cuts away from one man and falls down. Higginbotham was the first to hit him, number 49. And that caused John to go down. A gain of three out to the 23. It is second down and seven, five and a half minutes to go, third quarter. And Alabama almost got caught guessing, uh, which might have hurt him deeply. They jumped into a five-man line, put a middle linebacker over a five-man line. Taggy with the fake. Goes. It is caught. Out of the 39-yard line. First down, and that's what he caught. Tackle was made by Atkinson, number 21, and Sellers, 42. And Nebraska begins to move the football again. Time running, 5.05 to go, third quarter. First down at the 39 of Nebraska. Frosty Anderson has come in. Number 89, comes out to the bottom of your screen as a wide receiver for the front husband. Alabama shifting its defense as Taggy goes back, has a lot of time, and is now running out of that time. Now looking for running room, gets the block, and picks up yardage across the 45 to the 47. Terry Rowell, number 57, pursued him and picked him up. Taggy is a fine runner, as well as a passer. Nebraska eighth in total offense, but not in the top 15 as a rushing team or as a passing team. Overall balance. And here's a look at what fine receiver like Johnny Rogers has to go through, getting shoved, and to get hit again. There was a good knock there by Lanny Norris, the safety man who knocked him down. We're back to live action now. Second down three, second man through, Kenny close to the first down. It will be third down. Well, thus far this iron pole has not been Alabama's. As a matter of fact, they honored the championship high school teams of Tuscaloosa and Decatur, Alabama. Got together, some money to send them down here, and you know what? There were no tickets to be had when they got here, and so they're in Miami, but watching on television. Hoping it's off, the Crimson Tide doesn't turn to the rock. Third down. First down for Nebraska. Kinney being run out of bounds by Wayne Atkinson, number 21. First down, the ball just over the 50-yard line in Alabama territory with clock running going 3-18 in the third quarter. Nebraska 28, Alabama 6 in the battle for the national championship. And as Arthur Bowl goes to that team that wins tonight, symbolic of the national championship. Looking, throwing, has his man cross the Anderson. Anderson is down at the 43. Picked up by Lanny Norris and Steve Higginbotham. A look at Anderson again. A six foot one, 176 pound sophomore. Good move there. Steve Higginbotham coming over to try and make the stop. Woody Cox has now replaced Anderson. Comes out to the right. Second and four. Williams is back in for Alabama in the secondary. Taggy on the inside handoff. And it goes Kinney. First down down to the 31 yard line. Higginbotham makes the stop.
from the 31. Again, that sprint. Nebraska normally throws off this sprint. Taggy back. Taggy looking deep. Patton. Out of the end zone. Could not hold on to the ball. Donnie Rogers had his man beaten. Taggy put it on the money. Rogers in full flight in the end zone, and the ball got away from him. Nebraska moves the ball inside. There's Paul Bear Bryant talking to Terry Davis, his quarterback, what he must do across the way. Bob Devaney. the middle, this is Olds, and Olds has wrestled out of bounds. Again by Higginbotham, who has been very paired here in the last series of downs by Nebraska. An excellent block by Keith Wartman on Robin Parkhouse. You'll see it to the left of your screen, right up at the top of the screen. Wartman just turning Parkhouse to the outside. And 49 Higginbotham playing off the blocker to make the tackle. Olds weighs in at 215. Higginbotham is 6'1", 166 pounds. Third down and two, and there is Kinney trying to get to the first down, and it looks as though he's got it. Very close, down near the 20-yard line. And they're going to measure. Bob Devaney. Funny thing they were talking about it the other day, for all the accolades to Vannies Nebraska's teams have won. He has never yet been voted coach of the year. First down for Nebraska. That might be changed before too much longer. And there's Paul Bear Bryan who has been coach of the year and has already 210 career victories. He would like his 211th tonight, but he trails 28 to 6 with time running out in the third quarter. Nebraska has had good ball control. This is their 11th play in this series. This will be their 12th. Aggie looks, throws, down to the six-yard line with Atkinson and Williams making the stop. And I believe that's Johnny Rogers, and he is a little slow in getting up. Another look at this is Johnny Rogers coming out of the backfield from his slot back position. And a right on target pass. Hit there by, I believe that was McKinney. Rogers has a 77 yard punt return. And Bill Ennis has gone along the sideline. Bill? Jim, we've been checking down here on the Nebraska side on the injury to Larry Jacobs from the All-American defensive lineman for Nebraska. He was kicked severely in the right side of his right ankle. He currently has an ice pack on that ankle, and it's not known uh, whether he'll be back in soon or not. He could play again, but uh, he's going to take it easy, I think, for a while. He has the ice pack on. Let's go back upstairs. 78,151, and the game, well, there haven't been a, two teams undefeated in a major bowl game like this. It was back in 1956 when Oklahoma took Maryland. And it hasn't happened too often in collegiate history that all teams undefeated have met. Matter of fact, in the history of the game, it's only happened about eight times. There is Jacobson. And there goes Johnny Rogers. You know, Bob Devaney has a personal little situation he'd like corrected. He's met Paul Bearbine twice before in bowl games in the Orange Bowl of 1966. Alabama won at 39 to 28. Not as close as the score indicates. And then in 1967 over in the Sugar Bowl, Nebraska was beaten by Alabama and Paul Bearbine 34 to 7. Now Devaney has his team up 28 to 6. The eye back, Kinney, carrying the ball up the middle. Jeff Hughes has come in to replace the injured Rogers, and Terry Rowell gets up from the bottom of that pile. One minute to go in the third quarter. The ball is on the four. And there's Johnny Rogers. Been knocked out of him. Kenny unofficially has carried the ball 20 times, now for 100 yards. 
Dixon has now come into replacement. That is Dixon there, and he just does get back to the line of scrimmage. And again, you can see 57, Terry Rowell, down at the bottom of the pile. He's the one that Carol and I have been talking about, 5'11", 190, but we were told that he was 177 at the beginning of this week. Glenn Garson has now come in, number 39, replacing Hughes, who replaced Rodgers. That is Terry Rowell. Just to give you an example of what that weight differential means, those linemen up front for Nebraska, 221, 237, 238, 252, the men blocking on him. Third down from the four, Tacky throws, and it is incomplete. Intended in there for Woody Cox, and with him was Higginbotham. And now it is fourth down, 28 to 6 to score. All of Nebraska scoring in the first half. And Rich Sanger has come in. Spot. He has picked his on the 11, so it'll be a 21 yard field goal attempt. With Tacky to hold. Sanger's kick is good. 21 yard field goal for Rich Sanger. And Nebraska now leads Alabama by 25 points. That's the end of the third quarter in this 1972 on goal game with the score, Nebraska 31, Alabama 6. I'm gay with from Notre Dame, and I'm concerned about the youth of America. And rightly so, because this is how I got my start, just as many American athletes, on the playgrounds, playing games. Today I'm involved in a more sophisticated and glamorous game, college football. However, I'm afraid the youth of America are playing a different game, a game that involves the use of drugs. College football requires a great deal of mental and physical discipline. If you use drugs, you don't allow yourself a fair chance to obtain these disciplines. The youth of America has a great deal to offer and a great deal to contribute. So give yourself a fair chance to compete in the game of life. Stay away from drugs. The preceding announcement was made on behalf of the National Collegiate Athletic Association. Jim Simpson with Kyle Rowe as we began the fourth quarter in the Orange Bowl. 31-6, Nebraska Sanger to kick off to Williams and McKinney. Williams, who was injured before, takes the ball at the five. The 20, and down he goes, and rather emphatically, hit down by number 46, Maury Damkroger. In the Sugar Bowl today, Oklahoma, defeated by Nebraska on its way to the Orange Bowl, roared over Auburn 40 to 22. Jack Milgren had a great day with 149 yards and three touchdowns. In the Cotton Bowl, Penn State defeated Texas 30 to 6. And I hope you saw that Rose Bowl game on NBC in the last second. Stanford upset Michigan 13 to 12. <laughs> Davis looking long for Bailey, and there's Chris almost with the interception. Double teaming Dave Bailey. And again, Kush coming over from that deep safety spot. In perfect position. Almost had it. Ball intended for David Bailey. Bailey, having caught 111 passes the last two seasons, came into this game with only 21 receptions, concentrating on the ground game. Paul Spivey, the fastest man ever to play for a blind coach team, is in there, but this is Johnny Musso, and not going too far. Out of 
Alabama has been trying to get that inside game going. Successful only on a few occasions. And you can see that Larry Jacobson is back in there, number 75. has carried 15 times for 67 yards. Davis pitches back to Spivey. And he's to the 25-yard line. Jim Branch is over there, and Willie Hopper is over there again, number 81. And that's the reason why we keep talking about them trying to get their inside game going up the middle is because when you have a triple option offense and they take away, definitely take away one of your options, such as the pitch out, you've got to make the other two options go for you. You just can't leave that quarterback uh, hanging along trying to make it on his own. Well, that is Johnny Rogers. He is back in there, and there's Greg Gant, who will kick the ball away to it. Rogers has one punt return for 77 yards and a touchdown. Not calling for the fair catch at the 36. And down he goes at the 38. Tackled by Spivey, that very speedy back we were talking here about from Montgomery, Alabama. Action will continue here at the Orange Bowl. The score, the Nebraska Cornhuskers 31, the Crimson Tide of Alabama 6. Yes. Right. Okay, very good. Yes. Jacobson is all right, but he is back in. That's about it. I've checked with the trainer. Rogers is all right, right. Glover's all right. No other injuries. No other injuries. Nebraska just has three points in this half, but it, it took nearly six minutes in getting those three points, and if Alabama can't stop them again, the Cornhuskers are nearly home free if they can eat up that clock with a fine ball control offense. Here's the ball handed off, and that is Mari Damkroger once more, number 46, and he is stopped by number 96, Jim Patterson, on the Benny. And once more, little Terry Rowell was the first man in to hit the runner jammed him up. Although he didn't make the tackle, he certainly slowed him up in the backfield. Second down and eight. Taggy throws the ball and it is dropped. Dropped by Johnny Rogers. In or on his knees, Higginbotham was there with him. And it is third down and eight. 12.55 left in this battle for the national championship. Oh, the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. Talking to Bob Devaney throughout the week, saying, what's the difference between this year's Nebraska team and last year's? He said, I would say overall, no stronger offensively or defensively, but a lot more consistent than we were a year ago. Third and eight. Jaggy with time running out of time, gets away from Mitchell. Now throws across the middle and has his man, Woody Cox. At the 47-yard line, shy of the first down by a yard or two. And it will be fourth down. And so Jeff Hughes will come in, Taggy will go out, McKinney will go deep, and the Crimson Tide will get their hands on the football one more time. That's Bobby McKinney. nearly had that kick block. McKinney goes back to the 11-yard line. And cut down by Woody Cox as he gets to the 16. Action will continue here beyond goal. The score remaining. Nebraska 31 and Alabama 6.
Mike Zaggy on the phones upstairs as Alabama comes out of the huddle. First and ten at their own 16. Johnny Musso. Musso breaks it across the 20. Still on his feet and out across the 30-yard line. First down for Musso. And another look at Musso. Bear Bryant called the greatest running back in Alabama history. There he breaks number 57, John Atkins. And Bill Fish was in on the tackle until he finally came down. Back to live action. Gary Davis. Davis throwing. Intended for Wheeler. Knocked up in the air. And incomplete. Back to winning with Jim Anderson. And there's a flag down on the play. Alabama marching back. While we wait for a Pete Williams signal, Jerry, this has been quite a week for the state of Florida, and particularly the Miami area. The president has been here, Willie Brandt of West Germany has been in town. Alabama is playing Nebraska in the game of the quarter century. There's Johnny Musso, and apparently shaken up and hurt. And of course, tomorrow, you'll see it on NBC at 4.30. The Miami Dolphins, only in the National Football League for five years, in a conference championship against Baltimore. Well, it has been quite a weekend, and of course the Orange Bowl parade last night. Ball has marched back to the 15-yard line. Paul Bear Bryant looking on. With a personal foul is called against Alabama. You know, Jim, just looking at the statistics, Alabama's gained 172 yards on the ground, but only 47 through the air, and trailing by 25 points. Expect to see Terry Davis passing quite a bit. First down and 25. Davis outside and right there with him is Woody Harper. And Davis is a little slow in getting up. Davis is hurt. And that should bring on Butch Hobson. And another look. Terry Davis. Going on a little bootleg. Going to try and go again. He's been successful. There you see him come down on that left shoulder. That appeared to be what the injury was as he goes off. There's Butch Hobson, who is a junior, and he will be coming in. And action will continue here at the Orange Bowl with the score. Nebraska 31 and Alabama 6. Seven minutes, eight seconds to play, and in the space of a couple of plays, Terry Davis has gone out injured. He has 64 yards rushing, including a touchdown. Johnny Musso, the All-American halfback, has gone out injured. Option number 17 in as the quarterback. Option has only thrown eight times all year and won't get this one away either. As he's dragged down from behind by Atkins, the left defensive end. Alabama was down at the half, 28 to nothing. They made it 28 to 6. It's now 31 to 6. And Davis and Musso are on the sideline. Barbie is in, number 24. Third down and a long, long 24 yards to go. 
Wheeler goes wide left. And the left count. This is all the Alabama team moves. Here comes Hobson. Well, Mr. Missy Matkins takes care of it, along with Plant. Looks like a couple of the Alabama Imperial linemen were moving now. Well, we'd also like to thank the talking about the time for Ernie Siler. Did you see the story on Ernie and Sports Illustrated this past week? Great story on a man who has built the Iron Bowl from, well, to what it is today. His director, Dan McNamara, Hal Fleming, production manager, Tony Lorino, the art director, all have made the Iron Bowl quite an attraction. Gant has come in on fourth down as they've reduced the penalty for legal motion. And Gant will kick it away and... Back goes Johnny Rogers once again. Beautiful kick, driving Rogers back inside the 30, back to the 26. There he goes, up the middle and back down from behind. Great speed and dragged down by number 65, Buddy Brown. Very rarely do you see kick return is so consistently good. Johnny Rogers, great burst of speed. Finally brought down by Buddy Brown. First and ten from midfield. Looks like Van Brownson has gone in at quarterback. Number 12, that's who it is. Gets it to the second man through, Gary Dixon. Brownson and Taggy were to split last year, but Brownson was hurt a great deal of the time. Taggy took the number one job and started up the spring with it. Brownson, like Taggy, is a senior. Patterson getting up very slowly as Van Brownson calls the signal. The ball is on the 47-yard line. Patterson now stumbling off the field. See him, number 96. Taken up on the play. Rogers in motion, and Van Bouncen has lost the football, and Alabama's got it at the 48-yard line. Jumping out of this, Tom Silvis, the All-American linebacker, number 42 from Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania. 9.18 to go. And another look at it. You'll see the ball pop through there in a moment. Tom Silvis, Alabama senior, falling on it. Alabama, though, Kyle must try to get the ball in motion, get something going without its number one quarterback and without its number one runner. And perhaps its best runner in history is Johnny Musso. This is Hobson looking to run, and he's not going to go anywhere. Atkins is there, number 57, Jacobson 75, and the other present, Willie Hopper, 81. An excellent coverage in the secondary. This is Hobson's problem right now. And one other point that uh, has been Alabama's problem, we talk about third down conversions, making that first down on a third down situation. Nebraska has faced that situation 12 times, converted six of those third downs into first downs. Alabama's only picked up three out of 11. Second down and 13, the winner here tonight, and it certainly looks like Nebraska, doesn't it? 31 to 6 with 8.40 to go, went from the guard to bowl, and you'll see that presentation once this game is over. There's another mix-up. Young familiar Hobson in there. As Jerry Davis has done most of the work for Alabama all season long. Hobson, the junior from Bessemer. In and there's a legal procedure call against Alabama. And in talking about the national championship of the colleges being won here tonight, remember tomorrow afternoon, the American Football Conference Championship will be won here, either by visiting Baltimore or by hometown Miami. Governor Nebraska looks pretty happy, doesn't he? Governor Exxon. He says they're number one. That Baltimore-Miami game will be on NBC tomorrow. Hobson back. Being pursued. Down the sidelines and across the 50 yard line. Does not have the first down. Got a couple of crushing blocks while scrambling in the backfield. One particular one by Jack White, number 66. He really put a crunching block on Rich Glover, 79. Maybe we'll get a chance to see it in this replay. 
Hobson going back. He'll go off to his left, and he's going to come back around. Keep your eye on number 79 in the white, right here at the top of your screen, right there. Just straighten him up. That was Jack White, the Alabama senior. On fourth down and three, Alabama's Hobson is called timeout. And apparently here with the ball not even in uh, the territory of Nebraska, Alabama is willing to gamble on fourth down. Action will continue here at the Iron Bowl with the score remaining. Nebraska 31 and Alabama 6. Yeah. In other words, you want uh, one play and then that. On the 45-yard line of Nebraska. Fourth down and three. Alabama. Hobson keeps the ball. He has got the first down inside the 40-yard line. First down for Alabama with eight minutes left. 31 to six to score. A reminder, the Bing Crosby National Pro-Am, the 50s and 60s of this month, the Dean Martin Tucson Open on the 22nd and 23rd. The Bob Hope Desert Classic next month, February 12th and 13th. Bill, I'm to see you down there. What about Johnny Musso and Terry Davis? Jim, Terry Davis is through for the evening with just under eight minutes to go. He has a badly bruised left shoulder. He has an ice pack on it right now. Johnny Musso is doubtful for the rest of the evening. He received a cramp in the left leg. It could be a hamstring. That's it. Back up to you. On the 39, first down. Hobson trying to get Alabama on the board again. And willing to throw. Down and out and sent it for Wheeler. And it is no good. At the 31-yard line. Dave Mason, the monster man there with him. There's Wilbur Jackson now on his replacement for Musso. Just went out of your picture, number 80. It's W44 and Spivey 24. Impressive with the offense for Alabama. Actually, Hobson getting good protection as he goes back. His problem has been really excellent coverage by that Nebraska secondary. Alabama's top two rushers are Musso and Davis, and they're both on the sidelines. Hobson looking deep for Bubba Sawyer off his fingertips. Back there with him was Blahock. Sawyer apparently felt he should have had it. 7.28 to go. This has been an awesome display by Nebraska. Alabama did get rolling early in the third period and did get one touchdown. But the injuries to Musso and Davis and the increasing pressure of Nebraska has just about stalled the Crimson Tide. Nebraska stands to win its 23rd in a row without a tire loss, and its 32nd with no losses but one tie, and its second national championship. Hobson still with the ball, pitches back, and Jackson fumbles the ball out of bounds. It's Glover putting on tremendous pressure. That's Glover, hands on hip, walking back. There's Jackson who got the pitch and fumbled it out of bounds, number 80. And they were forcing him to uh, an almost impossible situation. Again, Willie Harper, the right defensive end, taking away that. He doesn't even look at the quarterback. He just goes with the pitch man. There's Musso, and as Bill has said, either a cramp could be pulled hamstring. His final game for the University of Alabama. What a career he has had. 38 career touchdowns. Eight Southeastern Conference records. 14 Alabama records. And then two for the night. And for his career. Hobson back, pressure coming from behind him, going to run it, and gets inside the 40-yard line and near another, well, back to the line of scrimmage, back to the 39, it would be fourth down and about 10 to go. Failed to make it on fourth down and 10, and beg your pardon, it is first down for Nebraska now. As on fourth down, Hobson couldn't find anybody open. 
You saw 7-12 on the clock. Nebraska has the ball. And this is a control ball club, and it can simply eat up those minutes. And Brownson in there. He's still got the football. And Brownson across the 50-yard line and runs out of bounds. Forced out as he gets down to the 43. Perry Rowell and Wayne Atkinson over to force him out of bounds. And Rowell playing his final game. He's from Heidelberg, Mississippi. 5'11", the smallest man in the defensive line, is having quite a night. Brent Longwell, 86 at tight end, and Bob Wall, 76, an offensive tackle that moves into the last offense. First down play, and there's Dixon sliding off one tackle, and then running right in, Bill Allen Parkhouse, number 90. Parkhouse is not a big defensive end. He's tall, 6'3", but he's only 201 pounds, but he is at the Super Knight tonight, too. Because of their defensive reaction, usually against that sprint option, the Cornhuskers have been able to take advantage with that inside reverse earlier. That time, Parkhouse played it extremely well. Second down and 12 with six and a half minutes left. And Brownson, it is off the hands of the intended receiver. Brent Longwell, who just came in, the sophomore, from home of Nebraska, number 86. That's an excellent play. They've worked it successfully to Jerry List earlier in the game. He delays at the line of scrimmage, lets the defensive team take itself out by just reacting in the normal direction of a play. Then he releases right up field. List was open Larry before. Along the sidelines there, the All-American tackle out, one trophy winner. Baggy back, pumps once, now looking. A little trouble, waving everybody downfield, and now throws downfield, and it is caught, and it's near a first down. Woody Cox may have the first down. And Van Bronson showed a lot of points there. They are walking the ball back upfield as the flag is down. And with all that running around, perhaps an, an eligible receiver downfield, but we'll wait for the official. Penalty being stepped off, taking the ball well back in Nebraska territory, back to the 41-yard line. And it was an ineligible receiver downfield. As you say, when a play takes that long to really get a pass off, usually the linemen moving around, they see a quarterback make a move up toward that line of scrimmage, they think he's going to take it down and run with it, and they'll move on across the line of scrimmage, and rightly so. Third down and 27. Brownson going up the middle and only for a couple of yards. It'll be fourth down. Well, I'm sure there are Nebraska rooters everywhere at Cairo who felt confident that their team would win tonight. Many Alabama rooters felt that their team had a whale of a chance, but only the most rapid Nebraska fan, I would believe, would agree that they figured that Nebraska would have a 28 to nothing halftime lead and be cruising on the way to the second national championship. Beat Alabama, yes, but the way... Well, not many experts thought so. The kitty is back inside the tent. And look, that's what's been going on all night. Great coverage, even on the kick. This time, number 54, Doug Dumbler, center, made the stop. This night, and when they award the MacArthur Trophy, what are your sentiments, Alabama and Nebraska? You must agree that the way Nebraska has played tonight in defense of its national championship simply deserves the national championship. Personal foul charge against Nebraska. There's Governor Wallace of Alabama. Moments ago, you saw the governor of Nebraska. First down and 10 is the personal foul. has moved the ball off to the 25. Spivey goes wide to the top of his feet. Now we have Vipito, and it is intercepted by Anderson down the sideline. Anderson gets down, loses the football. A long 
the sideline. And Benny Lippico, a senior from Greenville, Tennessee, came in for his first play, and it was intercepted. And the Boston got a first down at the one. There is Lippico. And there's the pass, and there is Anderson stepping up to pick it off, and he'll pick up one block up in front, trying to get as much ground as he can. And out of bounds on the one. Now from the one. And Bronson pitches it out to Dixon, and Dixon very close. And it's happened several times today. The Nebraska players are calling the touchdown, but not the officials. Just inches away. And Dawson carries it and there's the score. quick look at it. Van Bronson going right off right guard behind Mike Byrne, number 62. Sanger to draw the extra point. Nebraska's been averaging 38.5 points all year long and now have their 38 point in this ball game against an Alabama team that has given up all year long an average of only 7.6 points per ball game. 4.45 to go, and there's the score. Nebraska and the Cornhuskers and the many and rabid rubbers happy. Last regular season game, Nebraska had was out in Hawaii. They won it 45-3. I forget how many thousand tickets they had for that one trial, but about 9,000 more rubbers left than there were tickets. It was happy to be there with Nebraska. Sanger will kick it off. Williams 28, McKinney 26. You can hear the Nebraska fans chanting, we're number one. That is Williams from the five. Across the 20 and over a pile of men. Nebraska thought that Williams had fumbled again and that they had the football. Monty Johnson in on the tackle along with Rich Sanger. Sanger is one of those rare men. He not only kicks off, but he's one of the leading tacklers on the kickoff team. Ball is at the 28-yard line. The guy for Bowl to be awarded after the game by John Goldberg of the National Football Foundation. And it's obvious that the Cornhuskers are going to get it for the second year in a row. They will be number one. Hobson in. Hobson being thrown by number 66, John Peterson, who relieves Rich Glover at middle linebacker. As Bob Devaney begins to move in his secondary troops, many of whom will be back next year. Just looking at that lineup of backup men on that front line, Steve Manstead, the sophomore, John Dutton, the sophomore, John Peterson, the sophomore, Tom Robson, sophomore. Tom Pate, sophomore. Second down and 20. Hobson in trouble, being pursued. Back down as he hits to the 26-yard line by Pat Morrell, a linebacker from Wichita, Kansas. Shy of the first down, it'll be third down. And still about 12 yards to go. Morrell now calling defensive signals. He and Terrio called them from the weak side linebacker spot. Morrell replaces Terrio. Three minutes and 20 seconds to go. Nebraska has done one whale of a job tonight. Got off to a tremendous start. The first three touchdowns directly attributable to the kicking game. 
Second man two on the draw play. And Manstep makes the tackle of Joel LeBou. Check that. That was David Knapp, 39, not 30. Ball is at the 34. Davis will be back next year. Lachelio will be back. LeBou will be back. They're not back here, but Johnny Musso will graduate. And Jimmy Grammer takes himself out of the game as center for Alabama. Pat Reigns checking in to replace him. Alabama's had 12 third down situations and only three times has managed a first down. Now it is fourth down and four, and they're going to go for it. Up the middle, still on his feet, and gets up to the 40 yard line. Goes David Knapp. And Knapp has the first down. Well, I'll say this for the Crimson Tide of Alabama, Kyle. They're not letting down. They're winning the chance Nebraska is going even more. But they want to hold on to the football and move if they can. Well, two proud teams came into this game tonight. And you were talking earlier about even the staunchest Nebraska fan not believing it would be 28 nothing at the half. I think if the Nebraska players were realistic, they were not expecting to be leading 28 to nothing at the half. I'm sure they thought they would be leading. But by that square, I doubt it. First down. This is Hobson without much of a jersey on. And Morrell again makes the stop, number 40, as he gets across the 45-yard line. And now a Nebraska man is hit back at the 35-yard line. But 1.39 to go. Alabama tonight has not had too much luck. That is John Dutton down. They have completed three passes all night long. Dutton, the sophomore from Rapid City, South Dakota. Tall youngster, six feet, seven inches tall. And shaken up on the play. Well, we'd like to thank, of course, Bob Devaney who may be yet voted Coach of the Year when it's released as who is Coach of the Year. His fine Nebraska staff and Don Bryan, his sports information director, and our congratulations for a great performance by the Nebraska team. And, of course, we'd like to thank Paul Bear Bryan, who brought his team in 6-5 and five last year, 11-0 and 0 this year, and came in and got caught in the Nebraska buzzsaw, victim to the kicking game, and, uh, of course, the civil injuries, but by the time the injuries the game of the loser came along, it was... Much too late anyway, but the Marks, Crimson Tide, still fighting to the end, despite the fact they're down 38 to 6. First, I thanks to his sports information director, Charlie Thornton, also, plus the assistant coach, the administration of both schools, and of course, to everybody connected with the Iron Bowl committee. As I said, Don Ring, Ben Benjamin, Jack Baldwin, all former presidents, Mr. Bill Ward, the hard-working president of this year's Iron Bowl, that was able to match up the number one and number two teams in the nation, Nebraska and Alabama. And the results have been all Nebraska with one minute and 33 seconds left as Dutton is let off the field. There's Bob Devaney, twice beaten by Paul Bear Bryant by scores of 39 to 28 in the 1966 Iron Bowl and 34 to 7 in the 1967 Sugar Bowl. Matter of fact, he said later on, when they did either one of them, Nebraska nor Alabama had a Good record. Brian called him, said, let's go to the Liberty Bowl. But then he said, fine, and signed up for the softball. But he's back, and is getting his first against Brian. Hobson, still with the football, being pursued. Cross the 40, cross the 50, cross the Nebraska 40, and is dragged down across the way. The tackle's led by Tom McLevin, number 16. Over there with him was Gary Holstein, number 29. And the remnants of Mitch Hobson make it back to the huddle. He must have run at least 90 yards on that play, taking up some excellent blocks, actually, which usually happens when you begin to scramble that far around. Shows a pretty nifty running ability. This may not be the time to mention it, but the game outcome is certainly not in doubt. The competition's not over. They meet in a fishing tournament. Tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock, and yes, they will get up for it. From the 28-yard line, the ball is batted up and drops down incomplete. Stops the clock with 54 seconds to go. Dave Blackwell has been spotting Nebraska for us this afternoon. Well, I should say this evening, well into the evening. Dirk McNair for Alabama. Henry Goldberg is our statistician, and Huey McDermott is our production stage manager.
From the 28-yard line, the MacArthur Bowl to the presenters of the National Collegiate Football Champion, the National Collegiate Soccer Championship is decided here Thursday night. Howard University of Washington defeated St. Louis 3-2 for the National Championship. And another real thriller, but much closer than this one. Hobson carrying the ball down near the 20-yard line. Tackle down there at the 20. In on the tackle is John Peterson, the middle guard. And Alabama, with 42 seconds to go, Kyle is going to call timeout. And uh, this is sort of indicative, I guess, of how the Alabama fans feel, a little shredded, their feelings, I'm sure. Two outstanding teams coming into the game. And when it goes that way for one team, uh, that's uh, nothing else you can do about it. But Kyle, when they talk about that showdown on Thanksgiving Day between Oklahoma and Nebraska, won by Nebraska, but not by much, you got to believe it. Nebraska doing very well tonight. Oklahoma this afternoon rolled over Auburn, another Southeastern Conference team, by the score of 40 to 22. And Jack Milton just had a super day with 149 yards and three touchdowns, and Milton was the most valuable player of the game. And Penn State, upset by Tennessee at the season's end, took it out on Texas this afternoon, winning 30 to 6. Lydell Mitchell ran for 148 yards and 27 carries and one touchdown. And then in a game that was late in the ball game out of the Rose Bowl, which you saw on NBC, it was 10 to 10, Michigan and Stanford. But Michigan caught a Stanford runner in the end zone to make it 12 to 10 with about a minute to go. And don't you know, Stanford came back and kicked the field goal with seconds left to upset undefeated Michigan by the score of 13 to 12. And that brought us to tonight's climax. Climax, number one, Nebraska against number two, Alabama. And with 42 seconds to go, we have a score that has shown us that it hasn't been in doubt since early in the ball game. The end of the first quarter was 14 to nothing. The end of the half was 28 to nothing. It is 38 to six right now with just 42 seconds left. Third down and two for Alabama. Hobson. Down to the 12 yard line goes Hobson and there's Morell again along the Steve Mann step. Watch stops, 33 seconds. There is no moon over Miami tonight for the Alabama fans who travel down there. And as Jim and I have seen them in town all week, both sides. In fact, both have red and white color schemes. And it looked like everybody was on the same team. Red jackets, red pants, red tie. 15 seconds left. Thompson back and in a crowd. And gets out of it. To the 10 and down near the 8-yard line. With a clock running, 10 seconds to go. 9 They'll count it down to the national championship for the University of Nebraska. The night belongs to Nebraska, and Bob Devaney and a very disappointed Paul Bear Bryant walks across the field to see him. As Bryant said in the coach's luncheon the other day, it would be... A long walk. Did he lose to Devaney? Well, Brian has had to take that long walk. Well, we are now watching the hub of the follows a national championship game and any Orange Bowl game. Won by the score of 38 to 6. And of course, Bill Ellis has gone into the dressing room. Here's Paul Bear Bryant. Here comes the Nebraska team. The MacArthur Bowl will be presented by Mr. John Galbraith at any moment. And Kyle wrote, the score is 38 to 6. The national championship has been decided and does belong to Nebraska. It really does, and uh, I know the Nebraska fans, not only those who came down here for the game, but those across the country, particularly those back in the state of Nebraska, are quite thrilled, probably are saying, we told you so, and maybe rightly so. The rest of the country seemed to acknowledge the fact that they were number one. Alabama, on the other hand, uh, had every right to feel they could challenge, and I think up until the game started tonight, their record would certainly prove they were a worthy challenger. They were probably a worthy challenger anyway until the game got underway. And I've seen even the best teams uh, I have ever seen have this happen to them. And they start collapsing a little bit. 
and things go wrong for them. They don't play the type of ball they're capable of playing. I say that not to, to degrade the performance uh, by Nebraska in any respect. They put on a, a tremendous show tonight, but I do think we should not forget the great ball that Alabama has played all season long. I think they were a worthy challenger. It was just one of their bad nights, and uh, I think Nebraska helped make it a bad night. For they certainly did. If you did not see the early part of the game, be aware that the kicking game got Alabama down by the score of 21 to nothing before Alabama ever got a chance. The ball was kicked to them. They moved it out, and on their second series of downs, they had it. Greg Gant got a high pass from center, could not kick the ball away, tried to run with it, and was tackled on fourth down, as I should say, instead of third down. And then uh, they moved on in with the help of an interference penalty on Woody Cox. They moved the ball down to the two-yard line, and they moved it on in from there. And then, of course...